Okay, thank you very much. Um, in addition to um, your camera, make sure you mute yourself if you have not done that already. I think just about everybody has, but we wanna make sure that um, we're uh, just getting the audio from the AFSOLs. Um, if you have questions, please put them in the chat and I'll try and keep an eye on that. And um, I'll be trying to ask those um, as the cooking is happening. Um, a couple things on this. I hope you have, there's obviously no recipe yet. We're all going to be learning um, how to make this dish together. And I'll try and type up a recipe uh, based on what we learn um, in this video, in this session. Um, so right now there's just a, an ingredient list and uh, the tools to have on hand. Um, so please have that up if you don't already. And remember one concept that we've talked about in all four of these uh, sessions is the concept of, of mise en place is what it's called in French cooking and in the kinds of kitchens where I learned. And it means put in place and it's basically everything that you're going to need for that meal um, to make that dish you have at hand. You have your ingredients, you have your tools, everything is where it needs to be before you start cooking. Um, and uh, even though um, Mrs. Afzal who will be teaching us, um, I don't know if she knows French or not, but um, uh, uh, okay, Ms. Asal is saying she does not, but uh, that term was still clear. She was just telling us, make sure you have your eggplants ready. So that is an important thing. Have your ingredients here with us um, already at hand, please. If you don't already have those, um, take a moment to get those ingredients together. Um, so teaching us today will be Mrs. Afzal. Um, she is the mother of Ms. Afzal, um, who is, um, wonderful teacher at our middle campus, ANCS middle campus. She teaches math um, to sixth and seventh grade students, I believe. Um, that is uh, only one of many, many, many things that Ms. Afsal does at our school. She um, is a leader in mindfulness and meditation at our school. She's a member of our diversity and equity action team and supports that work throughout our school, both on the, from the kindergarten all the way through to the um, faculty and staff level. Um, she has been a coach in our critical friendship. Um, she and I were co-coaches last year, um, and that's a, an in-house staff development um, a series that uh, was ongoing before. Um, as Afzal is beloved by her students and, and a really excellent teacher and a wonderful leader at our school. And so really thankful that she is uh, sharing some of her time and her family's uh, expertise with us. Um, and with that, uh, take it away, Ms. Afzal. Hey everyone, it's good to see um, everyone here. And I want to now introduce the most important person in my life, my mother, who is way shorter than me, but way stronger in every single way. And so um, I'm gonna try my best to translate everything she says. And uh, I want you to know this is uncomfortable for her. This is her first time she's doing anything like this. And, um, but, she says, she said, she told me before that she chose this recipe because it was easy to make and it was very healthy um, and that we all should be eating vegetables more. Uh, and that's a lesson for me too. So we're gonna get started and with our eggplant, I'm gonna follow her. So one thing I forgot to mention before we get into the actual cooking is um, mm -hmm. if you can, if you're watching this, put a pin on uh, Humera Afzal's um, screen. That way you'll watch the action no matter even if I start talking or something like that. And she's the one who's doing the important work here. So please make sure you pin Humera Afzal. All right, so my mom has a bowl of water. So let me tell you. So what she wants you to do is get like a, um, like any a size bowl and fill it up maybe halfway with water because what she wants to do is put some salt in it. And when we cut the eggplant, we're going to put the cut eggplant in that water bowl so that um, we save it from getting too dark from the inside um, and to retain its taste. So everyone just grab any bowl, um, fill it up halfway with water. And how much salt, mom? Uh, one, tablespoon. one tablespoon mm -hmm. salt mm -hmm. and put one so tablespoon okay. and put one tablespoon salt in there and just let that sit on the side while you're cutting your eggplant okay 
तो साइज कोई मसला नहीं साइज का कोई किसी भी तरीके से काट के डाल सकते हैं क्या बोल रहा है so she cut off the edge and ek mein aaram aaram se kaat diya me and she's cutting the eggplant down the center now pause here i think and then again down the center okay ab kaato Mm -hmm. So now, she says, just cut it in. However big the blocks you want them to be, they can be. So these blocks specifically are maybe the size of like half my finger, like maybe that long. Yeah, and they don't have to be the same sizes. Um, she says they. Sh it, it's okay if they look irregular. It would be great if they were alike, but she says that's not possible. And the relative size is not that crucial. Some can be bigger than others, or they all need to be about the same size. About the same size would be fine, but if you have like a little small piece and one of them is bigger, oops, one of them is bigger, it's okay. Like these yeah. two sizes are different. It's okay. Like don't sweat it. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. So as she's cutting it, she's just putting it in that salt water on the side. Chicken. Eight more days. All right. So we're done with that first step. अच्छा आलू भी ना आलू के मर्जी है बहुत चिल्के उतारो नहीं उतारो आप क्या बनी है मैं चिल्के उतार रही हूँ Okay. So she's saying she grabbed her potatoes and she's saying it. If you the peeling of the potatoes is completely up to you, she's peeling the potatoes, but she says if you prefer unpeeled potatoes, that's fine. She's good with that paring knife. Unki mm -hmm. मैं बोल रहा कि आप नाइफ अच्छी तरीके से इस्तेमाल कर रहे हैं। हाथ से काटते बोल रहा कि ज़्यादा। हम्म। चीज़ें हाथ से काटते ज़्यादा या फिर? so she says you should also cut the potato the same way um and put them in the water so these that she's cutting they're kind of a little bit smaller but they're also irregular and not in any specific yeah she says cut them the way that you want when it all goes in the pot together they'll be cooked fantastic टमाटर काटते ठीक है सो शी सेज लीव द एग प्लांट एंड द पोटेटो इन देर um until like while you're cutting the the tomatoes and other things mm -hmm. so she has two tomatoes that she's using and she cut them in half and half again 
and maybe what the chip does it other pieces like smaller pieces i mean yeah pieces i didn't chip like yeah um, maybe half the size of the potato and eggplant pieces yeah smaller because potato. yeah smaller than that um so that they they're going to create the the masala or the, the curry i guess mm -hmm. Am I right that um, big and little and the tomatoes matters even less because they're going to kind of melt together? They're going to melt together, yeah. So she's showing another way to do it. She's saying oh. if you're doing it with your hand without the chopping board, you can just cut the tomatoes like that. Very good. Would she ever use canned tomato or is she always use fresh tomato? I mean, you canned tomato or fresh tomato? Like fresh. No, she says she only uses uh, fresh tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And now she has the garlic. Going to peel three cloves of garlic. And she's just going to chop them up small. Just uh, chop them up fine. Um, they don't have to be real fine. Just a good medium chop is fine. Okay, so you have the tomatoes and now you have the garlic. Oh, oh the, the, the pepper, the green pepper that you have. Um, any green pepper will do. She has a specific, uh, she has a jalapeno, but if you have a serrano, if you have any like a spicy green pepper, she sliced it in half. If you want to try, if you want to use two, you can. She's using one right now to show and she's uh, just uh, cutting it across. And she says you can cut them round, but she likes to do it a little bit to the side. This is great. This is great. Um, I'm going to give people just a moment. Is there another thing to cut after the pepper? Or is this the last of the knife? This is the last thing, the cutting. Okay. Yeah, and she has cilantro on the side, but yeah, that's it. Okay, so speak on the cilantro for sure. Let's just give folks a moment um, to catch up on cutting their um, potatoes, tomatoes, peppers, and garlic. Um, for the cilantro, it's fresh cilantro. It's just fresh cilantro, mm. and it's um, chopped. Two like two three tablespoons of cilantro, and it's not it's not very finely chopped, like medium chopped. Mm -hmm. And I've noticed with cilantro that you often need to wash it very, rinse it very well. It can get very gritty and sandy um, when it's when yeah. you buy the fresh cilantro. That's a good point. So this one is washed, but my mom just said that half of it will put in yeah. to the pot while cooking. Uh huh. Um, and half of it will keep in for the end to garnish. Wonderful, great. So the same thing with the, the pepper is we're going to put half of it in the pot when we're cooking. Uh huh. Half we're going to save to garnish the food. Excellent. I have a question actually about the um, pepper. There was a question in the chat. It says, um, is there a substitute or a kind of pepper that is good for people who don't um, like things spicy at all, who don't do any kind of heat? Bolo nahi dalo.
she says she thinks that uh, the grocery store they have they actually have peppers which are not very spicy. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we know. Pepper. I'm sorry, that cut out for me. I don't know about that. So, uh, green peppers that are, are don't have a high. Uh huh. Oh, is my internet working now? Okay. So I think they have some. I think there are some green peppers. That's a good question. There are some green peppers that are not very spicy. Here's one. Here's, here's one that mm-hmm. my mom has. Um, it's a green pepper, but this not one is not very spicy. Yes. Excellent. And so don't just, if you can find something else that is a mild green pepper, better to use that or than to just leave it out completely? Um, you know, that's your call. She says, if you remove the green pepper um, totally, that's fine too. Yeah. She's, she says, if you don't like spices at all, it's okay. Don't add the green pepper. Yes. Another tip that I have too when working with jalapenos is that uh, a lot of people know this, of course, but uh, almost all of the heat is in the ribs and in the seeds, the membrane on the inside, kind of white spongy looking stuff. If you're just, you can be very careful to just cut the green outside part. That is the milder part of the pepper. And if you only use that in your dish, it will, it will have a milder taste. Do be careful about getting that stuff on your fingers and then touching your eyes and stuff that can hurt. Absolutely. Never do that. Yeah. Uh, We also have a a compliment. Um, uh, Ms. Sattler, uh, the uh, kindergarten teacher at the elementary school, says that uh, Mrs. Afzal is a pro chopper. Oh, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) While she was cutting, by the way, she was saying that the chef is watching me. He's a better cutter. (laughs) So... She, you know, she was, uh, she was not uh, confident about her uh, knife cutting skill. So thank you for saying that. I think it looked great personally. Um, and I, I like, one thing I like about this recipe is that it has um, some wiggle room where the pieces of potato and eggplant can be a little bit bigger and a little bit smaller. I worked four days at one, this one restaurant in Chicago one time. Um, and I had to have a ruler on my station with my cutting board because I was having to cut things like mushrooms and grapefruit and other things into one quarter inch cubes. And I'd have a ruler on my station in order to, to make it so exact. It was pretty ridiculous. Um, not the kind of restaurant that you'd eat at every day. It was a, a real interesting experience, but I like a recipe like this that gives the cook a little bit more flexibility, a little more wiggle room. Yeah. But, her cuts on her tomatoes and, and peppers were excellent. Nice at all the same length. I bet if I brought the ruler, she'd still <laughs> make the grade, but. Nice. Can I get a thumbs up from people who are watching? Are we caught up on our knife work or do we need a little bit more time? Just about, I see more than one thumbs up. Alice, how are you doing? Do you need more time? Thumbs up there too. Okay, great. I think we can move on. People are Still doing a little bit of work with a knife, but for the most part, people are caught up to you. So I think we should uh, go ahead. Me. All right. Yeah. So next is we are going to drain um, the. She's going to get a. Um, what is that called, David? The strainer. A colander? Yes. Great. So she's going to drain the eggplant, the water, the salt water away. Just wash it off a little bit. So now the the salt water is gone and she has uh, her potatoes and eggplants together before she puts them in the pot. So she has a she has a pot ready. And uh, she just wanted to let you know that you can grab any pot uh, in the house. It can be any size. Okay. And she has a medium pizza. Uh, medium So right now she has it on low just because she's putting the oil in, but she's going to put the pot on medium heat. So you can also put the uh, put the pot on medium heat. And so she's going to go ahead and put the oil in 
and it's how many tablespoons, Mom? Uh, three. Three tablespoons? Mm -hmm. Three, four. So so she says three to four tablespoons Table of vegetable spoon. oil. Mm -hmm. uh, canola. canola oil or I mean olive oil. Also uh, if you don't have that, if you have olive oil, you can also use olive oil. Uh -huh. So it's a beautiful pot. I like the lid. Oh, thank you. Is she, I mean, Gotham, you have in Mexico, so. Oh, Mexico. She got it on her trip to Mexico. Nice. So now, so she has her oil in there and she's just going to put all the vegetables together in that one pot. This is really a one pot dish. And then she's gonna put her tomatoes. So that pot, it was on kind of medium low heat. It wasn't super hot yet, yeah? Yeah, so now she's going to put it on medium. She just wanted to make sure the oil wasn't um, flying everywhere. Mm. So the pot wasn't even on yet? It no. was on low, no, it was on low heat. I see, okay. Yeah, she had it on low heat. Okay. Um, right now it's on medium heat and she has all the vegetables in the pot and she's getting ready to put the Three. different spices. And uh, before she puts the spices, she's going to put the garlic that you chopped. Sure, one second on that. I got a couple of questions in the chat I wanna address. Someone says, does the oil go with the salted water? No, the salted water was poured out um, through a colander into the drain and you just keep the potatoes and the eggplant. The salted water just goes down the drain and then the oil starts in the pot to answer that question. Sorry. And then the second question is, please review what to do with the garlic. Um, I don't know. I think we mean just like how big are we cutting it maybe? Can we just look at that again? It's just chopped um, like is not very finely chopped, but chopped. Right. so chopped garlic. Very good. And then I guess the other thing that you could do with the garlic, you were about to do. It sounds like you were about to add that. Yeah, so. we were about to add the garlic first to okay. the vegetables that are in the pot. So that is what she is doing. So she put the garlic over the vegetables. Mm -hmm. And now she's going to put the different spices. So she just wants to make sure everyone is um, ready to for the spices. There's a few of them. Okay, we'll take a moment and get people, make sure that they have their ingredients. Did you already put the um, the green pepper and the cilantro in the pot? Not yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah so just to review, uh, I've got a couple people saying they need a, min a minute or two. If, are we okay? Oh yeah. Yeah, Absolutely, I'm going to mute myself and go ahead. All right, so the just to review what we've done, this pot was on kind of lower heat and she added uh, a couple tablespoons of a vegetable oil like canola or olive, or there's a lot of others that could work. If you have a question, just put it in the chat and I, I bet I can answer it. She put her oil in the pot. She added the drained potatoes and eggplant. Okay, uh, after draining the water off of them, she added on top of that, the tomatoes and the chopped garlic. And we're on medium heat. We're turning our pot up to about medium heat so that it's probably starting to bubble a little bit, I would guess, uh, on your side. Um, yes, can you hear it? No, because I was talking. Oh, <laughs> I was muted. Can you hear it now? Maybe. Uh, Maybe not. I don't know if these phone mics want to pick that up. But um, yeah, so it's starting to sizzle and boil just a little bit. Mm -hmm. OK. All right, um, folks watching, give me a thumbs up if you if, I, if you have your screen on, if you're in a good position. Yeah, all right, if your cameras are off and you need some more time, let me know, but I'm getting mostly thumbs up here. Again, potatoes, eggplant, tomatoes, and garlic are in the pot on medium heat with the oil. All right, so the, and then I know you said we're going to go into the spices and there's kind of like a, a longer list here. And so we want to make sure that we a get- few. There's like four things. And so okay. in the pot, in the pot, there is again, there's eggplant potatoes that you cut, mm -hmm. um, tomatoes and garlic. And so now on top of that, I mean, that next. So let's just review all the spices that you need on hand. Great. You need um, turmeric. 
Hold on. Hold on. So everyone grab your turmeric. And Adrian, can you hear me? What they eat? I'll be done. I'll be done. A half teaspoon. Half teaspoon of turmeric. Put it in there. And then human seeds. Human seeds. One, one teaspoon of human seeds. Like those this. Are, those are whole, I know. Whole. A whole, yeah, whole human seeds. Mm -hmm. um, and if you don't have whole human seeds, if you have the powdered one, that's mm -hmm. okay. Um, salt, she says, you know, you can use as much salt as you want based on how much she's using. What is this? I mean, half teaspoon? Yeah. Half teaspoon, she's using it. But if you want to use a full teaspoon, that's fine. It really depends on how much salt you like in your food. So that was half teaspoon. And this is the last thing. So that's the fourth thing. And that's crushed pepper. Crushed pepper. One teaspoon. One teaspoon of crushed pepper. I can hear it now. Yeah. Okay. That'll be good. So that was half, half enough teaspoon, mm -hmm. half teaspoon of turmeric. It was one teaspoon of human seeds mm -hmm. or cumin, if you have cumin, and half teaspoon of salt, and a full teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And the salt can mix everything. And the salt can be a little, I guess it, probably all of it can be a little bit to taste, like if people um, want a little bit more salt. She said that we could, we could add that if we needed it. Yes. The yeah. salt was according to your taste. Yeah. Just don't go over one teaspoon because you know, you should be able to taste the vegetables. I agree. And it's a good idea to wait till sometimes until you get further along in the cooking till you really can tell how salty this whole dish will be. You might think it needs more now, but it might, uh, reduce the water and stuff and you might be plenty salty later on. I need them though. So, so she's saying she's mixed so mix everything and don't put water in it because the vegetables themselves are stocked with water it's going to cook in its own natural moisture so what you're going to do after mixing it really really well on medium heat and if medium is uh medium yeah medium heat is you're just going to cover it with a lid after mixing it really well cover it how long are you going to cover it for like 12 minutes 10 minutes we're going to check it again in 10 minutes sounds good so after 10 minutes when we check it then we'll use the the, the cilantro and the, the pepper that we have. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So um, I have a question or two. This isn't in the chat, but um, I forgot to mention earlier, I was talking about all the wonderful things that you do for our school, uh, Ms. Afsal. And what I didn't mention is that um, Ms. Afsal lives in a large household, multi-generational family. Um, how, how old is the youngest person in your household and how old is the oldest person in your household? And how many people are there total is my question. I smiled when you said youngest because the youngest is one month old. Oh, wonderful. And the oldest used to be my grandmother, but now it's my father and he's 70. Excellent. Yeah. And how many people overall? Um, right now, I don't know what that means, my good man. Six. Right now, at this moment, is six people. Okay, excellent. We have we're, we have yeah. In a little bit, we'll have a few more than yes. six. And sometimes you've had many more people than that staying at your house. Yeah, when we um, we have dinners every weekend, and uh -huh. we'll have what we have a family of sixteen. Yes. So we have dinners for sixteen people every weekend. Wow. And Mrs. Absol is doing most of that cooking. Yes. That's a big project. That's a lot of people. Yeah, she likes doing it. And uh -huh. um, I mean, I will kind of cook them. 
I asked her, yeah, mom, do you I like cooking? Like she likes cooking. And yeah. oftentimes when I come back from work, I tell her, mm. I tell her, mom, have you been in this kitchen the whole day I've been at work? And she says, yes. <laughs> and that's what she likes. She likes doing it. She yes. Likes coming up with recipes and trying new things on us. And so I was going to ask that actually. I was um, going to ask like, when Mrs. Zafzal is looking for, is she ever looking for something new? And when she is, where does she look for something new? Uh, repeat that again, David. Like, there are some cooks who have the same recipe box and they just cook the same number of things. Some of them are a limited number of things, just a couple dishes they make. Some people have a really long list of dishes that they make. Um, and then some cooks are always looking for something new. And you already answered this part of the question. You said she's always trying something new for us. And so where does she look for those new recipes that she's going to, to try? So I translated that to her. Mm -hmm. She says she loves trying new things. She tries not to repeat things. And mm -hmm. she gets all of her inspiration from YouTube. Yeah, it's excellent. <laughs> she made lentil. She's mm -hmm. telling me she made me lentil salad. She makes my lunch. I'm sorry, kids. <laughs> Everyone who's listening. <laughs> my mom still makes my lunch. Um, she made me lentil salad. And she got the recipe from YouTube. And she wanted to try it. She's always trying new things. Mm -hmm. Chicken broccoli. She tried chicken broccoli. Nice. And... So she's open to like all cuisines from all over the world and she watches YouTube and she even leaves YouTube comments when they're good. That's awesome. What was the last thing that was just great that she found on YouTube? YouTube is the last that you'll remake. There's this dish called Angara chicken mm -hmm. or like hot chicken. Mm -hmm. And it's she found it on YouTube by this Pakistani chef and she loves that recipe and she mm -hmm. keeps she makes it a lot. That's cool. Yeah. I should mention your family is Pakistani. Yeah. For those who who don't know you. You know, most yeah. of our elementary school students don't, yeah. don't know you. So um, and what language are you speaking in? With each other. I'm, I'm speaking in Urdu, which mm -hmm. is the national language of Pakistan, but also geographically, I know you guys know India better. Pakistan is right beside India. So a lot of our food is similar. Um, and, uh, but um, my mom would like to say Pakistani food is better. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> uh, there's a family, a question here actually about this dish and how you all eat it. Um, one of our viewers asks, does your family normally eat this with rice or naan or something, naan bread or something else? So every day we have, my mom is answering and she wants to check on it at the same time, even though it hasn't been 10 minutes, just to make sure. Of course. So, so she's, yeah, so she's going to, Mix it up again. Just wants to make sure that the heat is the right amount and that nothing is burning. So she should. We should see no the, a bit of boiling, but not burning, not sticking. No, not sticking. And the tomatoes should be very soft. Let me tomatoes. So the tomatoes should be like mushy by now. Okay. And yeah, so nothing is burning here. I hope nothing's burning at home. That's why we're on medium heat. And if you're afraid, you can oh, always do it a little bit less. Actually, mm -hmm. she's doing it too. A little bit less than medium heat, mm -hmm. just to be on the safe mm -hmm. side. My mom usually makes um, with two eggplants because we have a lot of people. Of course. So she's making it with one eggplant and yeah, yeah she says it looks good. Same. Uh, so we have a question. Do we add the peppers? I, I think not yet. We have not added the peppers yet. Okay, so she says, I think it's ready to for the... No, not for the ready for the thing. Well, it's ready for the jalapeno. Okay. And the, so it's been, I'm, I'm looking at the clock and it wasn't act, like almost 10 minutes. It's been like maybe eight. So we're going to go ahead and 
And so just to re what you're looking for is the tomatoes are pretty pretty well broken down, and then you're going to add your peppers. The tomatoes are mushy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so she's putting half the jalapenos. I mean, okay. yeah, and half the um, the cilantro. And again, if you if jalapenos to you are very spicy, it's okay to stay away from them. Mm -hmm. She just mixed everything in as this beautiful, like the green color is popping. Yeah. It looks like it smells great. It does actually. Yeah. <laughs> she says, all you have to wait for now is the potatoes from being done because the eggplants don't take long. I see. Don't worry about the eggplants. Mm -hmm. Okay. And color the yeah, person. Mm -hmm. And so she's kind of, I'm guessing, when she's poking the potato with the spoon a little bit, that's kind of what she's figuring out is yeah. how done is that potato. And, and so, yeah, and then she also um, put the, because now we're at the 10 minute mark, mm -hmm. she put the temperature on a little bit between the, so a quarter, low medium. Low medium. She put it on low medium. Mm -hmm. So a quarter of the way to medium. Okay, and then we're covering it back up. Okay. So she covered it back up. <laughs> okay. So, um, Great. So we turned the heat down just a little one, bit. One note, um, uh -huh. Amanda said, she said that, uh, yeah, this is, she says, if you're afraid of potatoes burning or anything burning, then it's okay to put water in it. No, like, don't worry about it. Sure. And if you do just do, a, I would guess, a little splash at a time. Just a little splash of water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason too, I guess, we turned the heat down from medium to low medium is that the tomatoes had given up a lot of their water and some of that had boiled away and we don't want to go too, too hot when there's less and less water just around. Yeah, just like if anything, if you feel like, oh no, this is gonna burn or any fear of that, just put like a two tablespoons of water and it should be Great. good. Great. Yeah, so, it should be smelling good by now. Yeah, it's, it's being cooked in another room in my house and I can smell it and it smells good for sure. Um, so the question was, do you all normally eat this with rice or with non bread or something else entirely? Okay, so this specific dish because mm -hmm. it's uh, the there's not a lot of gravy. It's uh, so we would eat it with non bread. Okay. Yeah. She, and if they're... she makes it at home. So but right. in the end, um, well, she makes it at home, but maybe uh, you can have uh, like you can use pita bread. You can use, maybe if you have non-bread at home, you can you do that. Different types of bread that you have access to, that's fine too, that works. What does she cook the non-bread in? She makes, so every day when she makes rotis, she makes it on, on the tava, which is like a, let me show you. Mm -hmm. It's like a griddle that's kept made out of heavy cast iron. Like, yeah, it's heavy cast iron. It's flat. Mm -hmm. This is what she makes uh, every day rotis on. Yes. And then the non bread, the ones that I think you guys know of, it, they go in the oven. Yes. And that um, tawa, you said, that goes on the stove when she uses it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I'll, we better be careful. I'm a real bread fanatic. I love making bread and thinking bread and talking bread. So I could ask her two more hours of non-questions, but I'll, I'll go back to the stew. Um, so um, how do we need to be stirring it all the time? I see you're not. And so we seem to be okay. We're just letting the potatoes cook through, right? Oh. 
Predictive. Yeah, she's going to check it again one more time. But yeah, okay. she's not worried. Yeah. But she's she said it's okay if you are, you can just uh put water in it if you're afraid of it burning. But it should be like a I wonder if you can see what it looks like. Then. I will say like, if you were constantly checking it and stirring it and uncovering it, you're losing some of the heat and it's going to take you longer to cook your dish than it will for Mrs. Avzal because she's kept it covered pretty much the whole time, except for when she's stirring it, obviously, but she's not checking it. She's not uncovering it. And every time you do that, you lose a lot of heat and steam. So she's saying that if you want, she's showing you how to put a spoon uh -huh. or two how to save it. water, how to save it if you're worried, but don't, don't be worried. It's okay. Yeah. And you really don't want it to be a very, you said there's not a lot of gravy on this dish. No, so. but if you do want gravy, that's an excellent way to make gravy. Oh, okay. Um, is to just add water. If you like it a little bit more moistery, mm -hmm. to, that's not a word. Uh, yeah, <laughs> is now. <laughs> is to add water. <laughs> yeah, so she's going to check the, the potato with a knife. Okay. She's just putting it in the center and she's saying, yeah, potatoes are done. Mm. So they're perfectly cooked through. Yep. Maria, how's it going? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so here on our end, this dish is done, actually. It looks um, fantastic. And so she's going can, to. Can you show us again a little bit more like the texture of some of the yeah. things? I see Ronan Orlando is asking me, should the cilantro be in? Half of it should be in already, right? Uh, of the texture, eggplant or potato texture, just whatever. Yeah. So the eggplant texture is like, um, I guess the eggplant is very soft and very soft. So yeah, that one is, you know, that's fine. Um, it should be a little bit, a little chewy, but this one is soft. Yeah. And then the potato is the one that you want to make sure that it's mm -hmm. cooked through. So yes. if the potato isn't cooked through, keep on, keep it on the pot and let it cook through. She's saying the eggplant cooks really quickly. It's the potato that it right. sets the time for, you know, how long the dish is going to be done. Yes. And then somebody had a question, should the cilantro be in? I, I'm thinking we put, did we put half of the cilantro in we with put, the pepper? We put half the cilantro in before and half mm -hmm. the pepper and we're saving the rest for garnishing. Right. And if you haven't done that yet, just go ahead and do add some. So it cooks a little bit or what? If you haven't added anything, yeah, you would just, just put it in the pot yeah. and let, let it cook. The, the smell, the fragrance it will give off will be good. So she has taken the pot off the heat. Mm -hmm. And moved it to the other side so that you know it retains right. the moisture and so she could hold it like that for like let's suppose that we were eating this with uh you know a couple other dishes and they weren't quite ready yet i could do it like that just cover it and put it on the side of my stove and it would it would still be okay maybe in 15 minutes or whatever when my other dish was ready yeah this is one of those dishes that uh this is not usually the main dish in our house it's usually mm -hmm. one of the side dishes and when my mom cooks it, I mean, upside milk, the nice coconut, it's a juicy cheese and the salad and melon. And it's fine, just covered to the side, it's fine. Very good. A couple other questions, if I can. Um, so you say it's a side dish for other things. What might be the centerpiece of a meal with this as a side? Lentil, um, dal. Mm -hmm. So we'll make dal, we'll make this. And usually there's gosh kasana. Gosh kasana. There's usually some form of like meat dish. Mm -hmm. So there's like three things, Forma. like a meat Forma. dish, dal, and this vegetable dish. And dal is like a, a lentil soup almost. A lentil curry. Curry, yes, thank you. Um, and then uh, uh, I forgot what my other question was. So anyway, that's great. <laughs> so this is done on your side. And then you still have half of the jalapeno and half of the cilantro. 
you would just kind of each person would put a little of that on their plate if they like it or um yeah so after well no uh when when the food is done or when it's about to be served mm -hmm. in a big bowl or maybe just the whole pot sure. you just put it on top of the whole pot and that she's about to do that right now oh wonderful wonderful <laughs> So she's saying that if she were to serve it in this pot, if she would put this pot in the center, you know, in the middle of the table, she would yes. just garnish um, this pot by putting the the peppers and the cilantro, and mm -hmm. everyone would just take from here. Beautiful. She's going to put it on the table. Okay. Yes, I don't know where my, I'm just carrying my laptop around everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's on the table. <laughs> well, that's and excellent. With, uh, so then you would just uh so she has um how many pita bread are they? Non non bread. Just sorry, I'm I'm kind of hungry and I'm going to taste it. No, it looks fantastic. I, okay. I, uh, and Ms. Sattler uh, are thinking alike here. We have a couple questions about uh, translation. Um, I want to know in Urdu, is there a saying or a phrase that's kind of like you would say right before you would eat um, with people? Um, and then uh, Ms. Sattler wants to know how to say thank you in Urdu. So Ms. Sattler grew up in Saudi Arabia and she knows how to say thank you. Well, then maybe it's shukran. Hand. I'm not sure. <laughs> and I love that she asked that. It's the same shukran or shukriya. Uh huh. And I love that Hannah's there. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Ms. Essel. I didn't realize it was the same. That's awesome. Yeah, I know yeah. Urdu and Arabic are very related. Shukran. And um, will you say it again, please? Shukriya. Okay. And shukran. what we say before we eat. Um, because we're, uh, a, you know, a religious, faithful people, whenever we do anything, mm -hmm. they just say, in the name of God. And that's uh, it. How would you say that? Uh, Bismillah. I'll drop it in the chat. Excellent. And, and is that something that yeah. everybody says together at the same time, or one person would say, or how does that work? Yeah, I think everyone just says it, and it, it just means, in the name of God. And people say it before anything, when they wake up, when they do something good, uh -huh. when they drink water. Um, yeah. Excellent. Well, this has been really, really fantastic. This is a beautiful plate of food. And I hope you enjoy your. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, bringing us into your house and showing us how, how to make this dish. You are coming. Thank you, Walter. You're welcome. Shukran. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. I would love it if the the kids would take a photo. That would be so great, especially the middle schoolers. If you could Google Hangout Me or photos of the food. Yes. That would be amazing. I was actually just going to say that if anyone is willing to take some pictures and post it in the Facebook yeah. group for everyone to see, that would be awesome. That looks Thank amazing. you so much for sharing your family with us and I wish I was about to eat that right now. I'm jealous of all you guys. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Maxwell, do you want to see my food? I want to see it. <laughs> Let's go, Maria. Show me. I'll take you over there. I'll take a picture and eat and text it to you. Maria, a... we want to see it. Well, y'all, well, I got to take. But oh, not the ring, my no. Yeah, I know. We don't <laughs> I love that color. That's perfect. Mrs. Sanders giving a th two thumbs up right now. Looks good. I'll bring him some tomorrow for a test. Please do. <laughs>
Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. For Wonderful. Enjoy. enjoy dinner. Thank you. Bye. Miss you. Bye. Bye.